On this episode of Carnage, it's time to get the L67 back in the Superman. We are still waiting on a few parts for Dad's Ute, so I figure in the meantime, let's get this motor together, get it in the Superman, get it running. Since last episode, I've obviously dressed the motor, you know, got our supercharger on, alternator, all our front pulleys and stuff, including our nice eight rib pulley upgrade. So we've had to replace that pulley, that pulley, that pulley, and obviously we replaced our balancer, which you saw last episode. But yeah, eight ribs of uh, supercharged goodness. It's gonna be awesome. Obviously, I've got to pull it off again, and put our serpentine pulley on, which can't be done until we put our power steering on, which is still in the car and connected. So there's a fair bit to do, but dropping this in should be pretty simple. Let's get it done. Almost made it. Till I realised there's no flex plate on the back of the motor. So our engine installation came to a grinding halt as we uh, forgot to put the flex plate on. Yeah, that's important. So we're putting the flex plate on. Of course, I grabbed the flex plate bolts. Don't know what torque to do them up to. So I'll go and look and find these factory flex plate bolts are torqued to yield. They are single use only. Can't use them again. And in fact, there's a lot of anecdotal stories on the internet about the fact people reuse them and have snapped them as they've been tightening them up. Um, yeah, so not a good idea to reuse the factory flex plate bolts. So, of course, we went looking for an ARP solution and ARP doesn't have a listing. However, in the States where these engines are quite popular, there's a lot of people referencing ARP bolts and I'm like, where are they finding these bolts? So I look further and further and find there is a bolt. It looks, well, it looks like that in factory form. And it is a Chevy V8 cam bolt and they come in packs of three. So I've bought three packs of three and they're cheap. So, you know, they're only like 10 bucks a pack. You know, if you buy them from Precision International, which is what we did. So 10 bucks a pack. That makes them nice and cheap. And uh, the problem with that is they are a tad too long. They're only like a mil or two too long, but we have a grinder. Yes, we do. So I've got to modify eight bolts, just shorten them up by a mil or two. I mean, right now I could bolt them in and be 95% confident they'd be fine, but they are that close to bottoming out that I figure if we take a mil or two off them, I think we'll be uh, on the money. And even so, people are selling these bolts as kits in the US, they're selling them as a kit, you know, buy our eight flex plate bolts. Oh, by the way, we have heard of people having them loosen off, and I think that's the problem. I think people buy them, put them in, they bottom out, the flex plate or flywheel comes loose, well, there's your problem. So we're gonna go through, modify these eight bolts, shorten them up slightly, get the flex plate on this, then we can drop the engine in the car. Here we go. So being that they're a little 12 point bolt, which makes them extremely hard to hold in a set of vice grips, I put two nuts on there, like so. And then get my vice grips. 
and we go take a visit to the grinder. So we'll lock tight these puppies on. Unfortunately, I'm out of red, so we'll just stick with the blue. Hopefully, it's going to be fine. So, our torque figures for this one are a little bit generic, just got, you know, quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, blah, blah, blah. So, ours is a five sixteenth bolt, so it means 25 foot pounds, or about 35 newton meters. So, we'll get our big torque stick and do these up. <laughs> of course, it's enough to turn the engine over. There we go. I think we are in. Now we just have to hook everything up. Bolts are lined up. Let's get it in the air. Things are looking good. Okay. I think I had to have the rocket covers off to do this. So for those just joining us, we are using some pacemaker headers. Uh, they did have two small collectors, so we did a collector mod on them. So they've got three inch collectors on them. Uh, but the driver's side comes in two pieces to go around the steering rack. All right, so one side goes around one side of the steering rack. Those go around the other side. So obviously it has to go in two pieces and there's a little gasket to divide them. So that's why this is like that. Anyway, get this piece in first. I can just sit down there. Um, so while the passenger side slid pretty much straight in, the driver side, we've got to jack up the motor a bit. Trying to remember how this went in now, whether we went from the top or from the bottom. I'm going to wedge this under the engine mount and we'll lift it up and see if that was what we did. All right, so that's how we did it. I forgot all about that. All right, we'll lower this engine down a little bit. About 
trap in the pipes. There we go. I guess before we go too much further, we should try and squeeze this in as well, the water pipe. Look at it, massive convoluted thing. You gotta remember these engines were in front wheel drive cars in the States, so the water passages and everything are in very different locations to where you would normally expect them. They did it this way. I guess they had their reasons, you know, and Holden didn't wanna spend too much money correcting those reasons so all right that's got to go there and it bolts on with the header actually that went in pretty easy why wow well that was painful uh, I won't forget to do the trans lines into the engine bay first anymore yeah that set us back a few hours had to remove everything basically well not the engine but had to remove the engine mount the pipes all again just so I'd get the trans lines in there engine mount back on pipes back in there now we've got our ugh, big crossover pipe put that in as well it's not too hard thankfully <sighs> it's just the little stuff that catches you I was hoping to have this running today but I don't see it happening too much left to do all right let's keep going So it's been a pretty ordinary day both inside and outside. I've just put the uh, serpentine belt on and it looks like there must be a different length between VS setups and VT because that's a VT air conditioning compressor. That's what we had on the old setup. That one's got a VS on it which is compatible with our VN air conditioning but the belt is now floppy as. Need some Viagra. So we need to get a shorter belt for that. It's also been a very ordinary day in terms of it's taken me all day to put the pipes in, do the water pipes, uh, do the bloody transmission lines. It's just been a nightmare. Really has sucked. And then it's pissed rain all day as well. So yeah, hasn't been a great day. Anyway, looks like we've got some parts to order. Bit of click and collect for Monday. We'll get that sorted. She won't be running today, but she will be running very soon. Guarantee it. It is Monday and I've had a nice restful weekend. Hope you did too. Now it is time to lay in our wiring, our coil packs, put our thermo fan back in, just do the general hookup of everything. Uh, then we'll pour some oil into it. And by that time, we should have our stuff ready to collect, hopefully. Click and collect is making everything a lot longer. You can't just walk into the shops at the moment because of uh, the dirty L word, but hopefully with some little bit of pre-ordering, which we've already done, we can get our stuff today. All right, let's get this stuff in.
so while I'm hooking everything up, I just remembered something that came up in the uh, comment section of the last video, and that is the fact that I didn't use the cam sensor in the timing gear. A uh, few people were a bit surprised to see I didn't put it in there. That's because we don't require it, not in this car. The VN doesn't run a cam sync, okay? So it doesn't require it because the VN is batch fire injection. The VX that we came at, the, pulled the engine out of, it was, you know, sequential fire. Now, if some people would say, oh, you should run it sequential. Hmm, maybe. It makes the power anyway. I don't see it being that big a deal. And the engine is only going to be in this car, so didn't really matter. And there isn't provision in the loom to, you know, plug it in anyway. We could run the extra plug and the extra wires, but yeah, not necessary. So anyway, we know it runs as is. We know it will make power as is. So we'll get this all finished up, hit the key, and make it go broom. Connect up thermo fans, click. Alrighty. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Just needs some oil, some coolant. Uh, do up those flex plate bolts. Oh, and the belts, which haven't arrived yet. But anyway, let's throw some oil in it, get the filter on, get those flex plate bolts done. So we've done just about everything we can under the car. Uh, the last bit is just doing our exhaust gaskets. So got a couple of brand newies here. We'll slot them in, do them up, and then drop it down and see what needs doing up on the top side. Right, we are pretty much done. Um, just waiting on our accessory drive belt. We've got our supercharger belt. Once we've got our accessory drive belt, there's no reason why we can't fire this thing up. But until that happens, we can't fire it up. Well, we can, but I'd rather not. So, Guess I should find something else to do. It's here! Woohoo! Okay, we've got our belt. So it's a 2745. I think we explained before that uh, the factory one was like a 2845 for a VX. This is a VS style, so it's 100 mil shorter. All righty. Um, let's make it happen. Okay, so eight rib this time. Right, success. Okay, last thing is coolant, then we can fire it up.
I'm going to fire this thing up, circulate some of the coolant into it. It should just start. Everything's the same as it was before. So let's pre-prime the pump. No leaks, no fuel. Oh, looks pretty good. Here we go. Well, it runs. Awesome. Um, obviously, something's changed because there's a little bit of a stumble off idle. I think uh, maybe it needs a little bit of adjusting of its uh, cold start tune. But um, other than that, sounds awesome. Cool. All right. Let's take it out for a drive. Good old full manual shift. Back into the swing of things. And we'll take it for a little test run. Make sure it's all sweet. Seems to be running all right so far though. You forget how fun it is to drive this thing. She's a good girl, so looking forward to taking this thing to the drag strip soon. I guess we should uh, just prepare ourselves, be ready for when everything opens up. But first opportunity, we're taking this thing to the drag strip. It's going to be awesome.